Hallelujah. Welcome to our blessed worship service in Mombasa Mission Church. Let us begin with a word of prayer. Dear God, we are in your presence to worship you. We pray for the working of the Holy Spirit from beginning to the end of this worship service. And may you receive all the glory and all the honor. As in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today, the message says the misunderstanding to get rid of. Scripture reading comes from the book of Mark chapter 10, verse 17 to verse 22. And this is what it says. Now as he was going out on the road, one came running, knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? So Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one that is God. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. And he answered and said to him, Teacher, all these things I have kept from my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, One thing you lack, go your way, sell whatever you have, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross, and follow me. But he was sad at this word, and went away sorrowful. For he had great possessions. May the Lord bless his word. Amen. There are misunderstandings which each and every one of us needs to get rid of. Because with these misunderstandings, we have wrong views. And as a result, we will ask wrong questions. When you have misunderstandings, you end up asking the wrong questions. Every time you're given an opportunity to ask a question. Hallelujah. In the text that we've just read in Mark chapter 10 from verse 17 to verse 22, we see a rich young man who had serious misunderstandings in two important matters. First, he had a misunderstanding concerning eternal life. And second, he had a misunderstanding concerning material things. Let us not have such kind of misunderstandings. Hallelujah. Point number one. Our Lord Jesus made it clear in the Bible concerning how we gain eternal life. Hallelujah. The book of John, chapter 1, at verse 12 to verse 13, the Bible says, But as many as received him, those he gave the right to become children of God. Those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Hallelujah. Those who received him, those who believe in his name, our Lord Jesus Christ said he gave them the right to become children of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So, one has to believe in our Lord Jesus Christ and has to receive it, to sincerely receive Jesus in his or our heart. And not everyone receives Jesus. So, if you have received Jesus Christ, count yourself blessed. Hallelujah. And have true thanksgiving even for this blessing of salvation. The book of Ephesians chapter 1, 
verse 4. It tells us about God's plan for salvation. He says, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be only and without blame before him in love. Hallelujah. For one to be able to receive salvation, be able to receive eternal life, the same must have been chosen by our Lord before the creation of the world. Hallelujah. And this is something that many people misunderstand. And they end up having wrong views, thinking that salvation or eternal life is something that they chose. But I want to tell you, before you choosing the Lord, he chose you first. The book of John chapter 15, and verse 16, it says, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. Before you deciding to choose the Lord, he chose you ahead of time. He chose you before the foundation of the world, that you be holy and blameless in his sight, in love. Hallelujah. So, realizing this spiritual truth, you need to restore thanksgiving. True thanksgiving before the Lord. Because having been chosen by the Lord, you became a sheep. In God's time, he allowed you to hear the word of the gospel. He allowed you to believe and accept him in your life. So what did you become? You became a child of God, as you have read in John chapter 1, verse 12 and verse 13. Again, Jesus became the good shepherd for your life, and you became his sheep. See, the book of John chapter 10, from verse 27, this is what he says. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them. And they follow me, and I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Hallelujah. Salvation is the work of our Lord. Salvation belongs to the Lord. He chose us before the creation of the world. He gave us faith to believe in Him. We believe and accepted Him in our lives. Hallelujah. And we became sheep of His flock. And Him, the good shepherd. And he assured us in this text of John chapter 10 that no one can snatch my ship out of my hand. My father was given them to me is greater than all and no one can ever snatch us from the hand of our Lord. Hallelujah. It's the Lord himself who has given us eternal life. It's not something we worked for. It was freely given to us. Hallelujah. First John chapter 5, verse 11, verse 12. Very important. It emphasizes eternal life. And I read. And this is a testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. He who has a son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Having Jesus in our lives, in our hearts, we have eternal life. And whoever does not have the Son of God in his soul our life does not have eternal life. So, mark this. 
eternal life, or in other words, salvation, is by grace alone. It's through faith in Christ alone, and is for the glory of the Lord alone. Hallelujah. It's not by works. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and verse 9. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and verse 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that is not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Hallelujah. It is purely by the grace of God, through faith, and this faith is not something that we came up with. It is a gift of God. Hallelujah. It's not by works that anyone should boast. So we see this young man, a terrible misunderstanding. Going back to Mark chapter 10, and the same verse 17. He says, Now as he was going out on the road, one came running, knelt before him, and asked him, Good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? This young man thought to inherit eternal life is about his works. He wanted to be taught to do something, to do some works. Because of his misunderstanding, he asked the wrong question. Let us clear our misunderstanding and let's have clear view of salvation. Hallelujah. Without the grace of God, your efforts are like filthy rags. When you read the book of Isaiah chapter 64 verse 6. They are filthy rags. What you need is to be born again first then your good works will be of good value before God. Hallelujah. Point number two. Must have correct view concerning material things. This young man had a wrong view concerning material things. And to him, material things were idols. That's why when the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ told him, go and sell your possession and give to the poor, he went away sad. See Mark chapter 10, verse 21 and verse 22. Then Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, one thing you lack, go your way, sell whatever you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasures in heaven. And come take up the cross and follow me. But he was sad at this word and went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Hallelujah. This young man had great possessions. It's not wrong to have great possession, but it is wrong to take your possession. See, they are your gods, they are your idols. How should we view possession? How should we view material things? But the correct biblical view of material things is using all material things for the sake of expansion of God's kingdom, to facilitate evangelism and mission. To support those who do evangelism and missions. Jesus' ministry was successful because there were people who supported with their material things. See the book of Luke. See together the book of Luke, chapter 8, verse 1 and verse 3. Luke chapter 8. Verse 1 and verse 3 says, Now it came to pass afterwards that he went through every city and village, preaching and bringing the glad 
tidings of the kingdom of God and the twelve were with him. And the certain women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom had come seven demons, and Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod Stewart, and Susanna, and many others who provided for him from their substance. These women provided for Jesus' ministry out of their substance. They used their material things to fund Jesus' ministry. And that's why easily Jesus was able to move from town to town, from village to village. A number of times he used boats. Sometimes he used donkeys. How was he able to move freely? How was the physical needs of the disciples provided for? We've seen in this text, Luke chapter 8 from verse 1 to verse 3, that they were people, and especially women, people whom Jesus had solved their spiritual problems. They used their material possession to support his ministry. Hallelujah. Also, when you read the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 10 to verse 18, you see how the Philippian church supported Paul's missions, missions that he went, he undertook. This church fully supported him. Hallelujah. And Paul prayed for them that may the Lord supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. When we use our material possessions to, sub, to, to, to facilitate the works of evangelism and missions, the work of God, God meets all our needs according to his riches and glory. Hallelujah. Amen. For evangelism and missions, there are those who go preaching the word, and there are those who facilitate or they send. You see the book of Romans chapter 10, from verse 13. This is what it says. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Verse 15, and how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. Hallelujah. We see that there are those who go and preach, and there are those who send. We should use our material things to facilitate the spread of the gospel of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Amen. But this young man we have read in the book of Mark chapter 10, verse 21 and verse 22. He had great misunderstandings about material things. He loved material things more than he loved God. And that's why when the Lord told him, go on and sell your possession and give to the poor. He went away sad. May that misunderstanding be clear in our lives and may we use our possession for expansion of God's kingdom and his righteousness. In conclusion, I want to emphasize this. Be sure of eternal life and what is God's given method for us and for everyone to inherit eternal life. And a second thing, understand the biblical view of material things and how the Lord wants us to use our God-given riches even to expand his kingdom. Hallelujah. If that is your priority, 
all other things that you need and people dream of will be added to you as well. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 says, When we seek his kingdom and his righteousness, all these other things will be added to you as well. God bless you so much and may you experience fulfillment of this word. Let's pray. Father God, we worship you, we give you glory. Thank you for speaking to us because you want us to get rid of all the misunderstandings concerning salvation, concerning eternal life, and in concerning material wealth. Lord, be glorified through all eyes and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.